How's it boys and girls? Does your guitar suffer from muddy pickups, especially the neck pickup, especially when using overdrive and especially when you start turning the volume pot down, kind of like this. <laughs> Sounds familiar? Stick around for this video. I am not talking about the treble bleed installation, the treble bleed mod, which is a great mod on its own. Don't get me wrong, it's quick and easy to install. However, what I'm talking about is the 50s or vintage wiring method. I don't hear a lot of people using or talking about this me method or using it a lot. And um, basically, just to clarify things, it doesn't mean that the wires with which you wire the inside components of your guitar up with have to be made in the 1950s or from a different decade. It implies the method with which you wire up the components on the inside of the guitar, more like the signal path, the order with which you wire them up with. Okay, let's have a quick overview of the different wiring schematics that I've used. Right now it's in the modern wiring method. This is the way it came out of the factory with. This is a very nice 1993 Washburn HB35S. I really try to keep this guitar as original as possible. Um, but to be honest, the w to me, to my liking, the way it is now with this modern method, unfortunately this guitar, even though, even though it looks, feels and probably even smells amazing, to me it's unplayable for the type of music that I play because I ride the volume and the tone knobs quite a lot. So for me the modern, modern method is basically, unfortunately it's unusable for me unless I'm running everything wide open. And in a nutshell, the, 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 the biggest difference between the modern method and the vintage method is that with the modern method, the signal path first hit the, the tone knobs and then only do they hit the uh, volume, uh, volume knobs. And what actually happens uh, then is that the, the tone knobs actually act as extra resistance in your signal path. So when you're turning your volume down, you're adding extra there's extra drag, there's extra resistance there. This, this is what kind of sucks away a majority of the high frequencies. Whereas obviously with the vintage or 50s wiring, it's the other way around. The signal path goes first to the volume pots and then to the tone pots. But anyway, like... <laughs> It's like that's fully open but clean tone obviously the the uh you're gonna hear a bigger bigger difference when i put an overdrives on turn it down more i'll start on the neck pickup because this, the, the, this is the one that gives the most problems for me with fingers. Okay, it gets pretty muddy. <laughs> Bridge pickup. Fully open, now we back it down a bit. Can't really see from the light. Okay, that's a number seven. Yeah, the bridge bridge pickup is pretty usable, you know, with the modern method. Set some drive. Let's try fully open. Back 
down a bit. Stack it with another Zen drive, fully open. stack it it's you know it's pretty much one volume until the uh, last little bit you hear that last little notch yeah i don't know uh, the modern method is not really for me but i'm sure there's some people who can use that neck pickup It's almost as if I had to have it wide open, but then I turned the, the tone knob down. So volume turned down to three with the tone knob fully open. Sounds like as if I had to open the volume to ten and turn the vo turn the uh, tone down to three. cup of tea this modern method but still cool just another thing about the modern the modern method what I what I tend to do a lot is use my fingers when I'm doing accompaniments when I'm comping and then when I when I play lead lines I usually use a pick but when you use your fingers for comping obviously the flesh of your fingers makes it sound a little bit warmer it's a different tone as opposed to using the pick the pick is brighter obviously the flesh is a lot warmer but um when you roll the volume down again when using your your fingers to me it becomes a bit too bit too uh it becomes a bit too uh, muddy obviously Just another thing to consider if you're playing that type of music. Uh, I don't recommend the uh, the modern method. I recommend either using the uh, treble bleed method or the or the fifties wiring method. Just an extra thought. Okay, just to point out to those of you who might not know what a treble bleed is, it's very simple. Basically, it's just a little capacitor, like so. I don't think the camera will focus on there. Come on, camera, you can do it. Ah, it's a little capacitor and uh, it has just two feet, you know, that you need to 
solder onto your volume pots so ba will, you need to solder it between lugs one and two of your volume pots the th uh, lug three you you need to ground to the top of the uh, volume pot there's a variety there's actually a variety of treble bleeds that you can have uh, check out I'll put a link in the description below to a YouTube channel called Brazier Tone Works, which I highly recommend everyone checking out if you're into wiring schematics. This is where the 50s wiring diagram comes from as well. I highly, highly recommend this channel. The uh, Don from Brazier Tone Works explains that there's actually, he, he mentions three types of treble bleeds. This is the simple one, but there's also the Duncan one and the Kinman one. Each of them have different values and they, they affect the amount of treble differently or well, the amount of treble that either stays or gets shaved off when turning down the volume part so I'll, I'll put a link to that in the description below i highly recommend you boys and girls check th checking that out but that's that's what a treble bleed is easy it's the simplest mod you can do and as i said if you can if you can do the treble bleed mod you'll be able to do the 50s wiring uh, mod as well Straight off the bat, after having done the uh, treble bleed mod, I can hear there's, there's a huge, huge improvement over the tone. You know, there's a lot more, a lot more highs present. Obviously, you're not going to hear a difference when the volume pots are fully open. Once you start turning it down. You the bridge pickup there's still a lot of still a lot of highs missing in my opinion there's a big improvement the one that the pickup that tends to get a bit tricky is the neck pickup because it can get a bit muddy that's on one huge improvement but I personally prefer the 50s wiring method but this is you know a huge improvement overall the proof in the proof in the pudding is when you start pr putting some overdrive on so let's put some max on 808 might get a bit loud in three two one <laughs> fully open then yeah the, the thickest strings tend to still they tend to become a bit muddy but it's still very usable cleans up uh, cleans up a lot better as well but this tone uh, i like kind of like this tone for the bridge pickup pickup it's it's pretty it's a nice sound 
as if you turn the the tone volume down a little bit on the bridge pickup kind of like robin ford-esque sound or steely dan <laughs> you start turning it down with overdrive but still huge improvement you know so I I highly recommend doing this mod uh, if you if you're unsure about wiring diagrams you know if you don't know how to solder very well or you know the if you don't have a lot of time or if you're lazy like i am then probably the treble bleed is the best and easiest method for you out there but to be perfectly honest to my ears the treble bleed kind of sounds like well, if i had to give an analogy let's say let's say you're in a studio and you do a good take of a good run and you're very happy with the performance but then upon listening back to the uh, recording, you realize like, ah, oh, something changed with the tone. Maybe the mic moved off position or something. I'm happy with the performance, but I'm not happy with the sound. And then you start altering the recorded tone post-production, say adding the EQ, you know, adding extra presence, extra highs. This is what to my ears, the treble bleed kind of sounds like. It sounds like, I wouldn't say artificial, but it's as if the tone to begin with in your guitar is not as it should be, and you're trying to use some kind of crutch to get it back to what you want. Don't get me wrong, it's still a great solution. It can save you, you know, it has saved me on many occasions, but it's still not what I'm looking for. I know I can do better with the 50s or the vintage wiring method. Okay, welcome to my extremely messy workbench. As you can see, the, the guts of this poor guitar are leaking out all over this not very sterile operating table. But before putting, anything, putting all the pots back into their respective holes, what I like to do is just to test everything is working fine. And what I've noticed that the pots that came with the guitar out of the factory are what, are, what people to refer to as 500K audio taper pots or logarithmic pots so you can see these if you have if you see the 500k but they have an a in front of them you will know these are logarithmic audio taper pots and what that means is that when you start turning the volume down the majority of the change so here i have the little volume knob here this is the neck pickup so the majority of the change in volume will happen between 10 and let's say seven, it will be a huge dip. So kind of like a, a skateboarding ramp when you do the drop-ins. I actually dislocated my shoulder doing that once. Not a very fond memory. But the majority of the change happens in the beginning. So there's a huge drop. And then from seven onwards to ten, the slope kind of evens out. Let me demonstrate that to you. It's going to be loud in three, two, one. <laughs> A huge difference between 10 and 7 and from 7 down to 1 it's kind of like a more gradual slope seven back to ten as you can hear there's quite a I don't know if you saw that let me <laughs> sorry I wasn't looking at the camera so let me do that again Seven big difference. Seven to zero, the slope evens out. It's just personal preference with these tapers. I personally prefer this other pot, which, as I said, have a B in front of them. So as opposed to the uh, linear pots, uh, as opposed to the audio taper pots with the A, the B stands for linear pots. So this means that the taper with which the volume drops down with is a more even a more linear taper so it's like more of a straight line i don't want what i'm going to do is i'm going to just wire the guitar up using the factory components just to show you boys and girls what the difference is in tone when using all the 
without having to buy any new components. So we're going to have a listen to that. And then as an additional bonus, I will open the guitar up again uh, for operation number two. And I will just change it to a linear taper, which is what I prefer. Like I said, it's just personal preference. If you like your volume drop to happen in the beginning, let's see you doing these little tremolo swells. These little tremolo effects, then, you know, I would say you would probably find the audio taper a lot better. So the ones, again, the ones with the A in front of them. But if you're like me and you like a gradual uh, drop in volume, then get the linear taper pots, so the ones that are B in front of the 500Ks. Okay, here we are post-surgery. Now it's in the 50s vintage wiring mode. I haven't put the pick guard back on yet, but it's actually looking quite good without the pick guard, I must say. What do you think? Pick guard on or off? Write in the comments below. Anyway. Neck pickup, vintage 50s wiring. Oops. Neck pickup. As you can hear, when I turn the volume down, it, it cleans up a lot quicker. I don't need to turn it a lot. This this has the audio taper, the logarithmic pots in it. So it's down to eight. Try the bridge. Yeah, same, same with these bridge volume pots. These are also logarithmic. So they have the little A in front of the 500K, making them dip in volume quite quite quickly but I can hear I can hear a definite improvement in the highs some overdrive. Definitely a huge improvement when using the uh, Maxon 808 when rolling down the volume. I can definitely hear. Uh, I can definitely hear a huge improvement.
that's neck pickup, you know, with everything. Most of it rolled down. There's a kind of a, I don't know if you can hear that, there's a bit of a, there might be a bit of a, a slight hiss. That's one thing about the 50s wiring, you got a, a bit of a trade off. There is a bit of a, it becomes a bit more susceptible to, to like background noise. I'm running quite a lot of lights in here and the electricity in my apartment is not like the cleanest electricity. That's why here, sudden pops now and again. I apologize for that as well as I've got to get some kind of electricity, some kind of thing with which you can filter the electricity with. Maybe some of you out there can give me a tip on how I can do that. Maybe there's like some kind of Furman, uh, Furman pedal or something with which you can filter out the uh, electricity. I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of you know what I'm talking about. Please enlighten me by write, writing in the comments below. I, I, I really appreciate that if anyone knows a solution for that. That's with, that's with overdrive on. And that's the volume turned down to two on the neck pickup. it now with the Zen drive so it's Maxon 808 going into a Zen drive clone <laughs> I'm sure you can hear. I'm sure you. I'm definitely sure you can hear that. But I mean, I'm running a. I'm running direct from my Roland Cube into a, a new X Solid Studio, little uh, uh, little impulse response and cab simulator running into my Focusrite, and with dirty electricity all around, with two overdrive pedals stacked. definitely hear a huge improvement in the way it clears up the way it cleans up right now when I turn it down from 10 to 8 there's like a you know there's like a 40 or 50 percent 
dip in volume so for me that's not ideal maybe that's the thing for you you know i mean it's great for this stuff if you want to do these little tremolo swells or especially with some delay things like that so if that's your thing then uh, <clears throat> I recommend stay with the audio taper logarithmic taper a behind the uh, 500k if this is still not bright enough for you what you can do you can still install a treble bleed into this you know it's there's no right or wrong way to do it it's just like I thought by demonstrating this to you I'd give you another plethora of uh, uh, sound that you can use for your for for, the, for defining your tone and what you, if that's not even if that's not bright enough then you can also go you can up the value of the potentiometer from a 500k to a 1 meg 1 maybe there's one in between 700k I'm not actually sure I'll have to check that up but yeah the the, the more the bigger the value uh, of the potentiometer the more bright it's going to sound this is why in general, people tend to use 250k pots for, let's say, strats, tallies, you know, single coil pickups, uh, because they are they tend to be bright, pretty bright already. So if you'd add a 500k pot to, let's say, a tally coaster, I don't know, man, that's like not really. I think it would make heads explode and ears bleed, but that might be the thing for you. So anyway, there's just some things for you to consider out there. So this, what you heard there, was the vintage 50s wiring. Um, I am going to now change the potentiometers to linear pots and just to hear what the difference is. But I'm going to, and then I'm going to do a couple of sound takes. Okay, so I've changed the volume pots out to linear pots, so the B500K. And the tape is a lot smoother. Let me actually put it on with some overdrive. <laughs> up very nicely but the t as I said the tape is a lot smoother it's a linear curve as opposed to having a huge dip and a gradual decrease in volume this is more linear it's more even same with the bridge So if you're using a guitar like a, a Les Paul type of guitar where you have uh, two pickups, you know, two humbuckers and a switch and you have two separate volume controls, a typical trick what a lot of people do is like you would have, let's say I would roll the volume down on the neck pickup. So. Two, to have like a clean tone channel and then I would leave the bridge lead pick up fully open so you can have two separate channels without touching any pedals So it's two separate clean channel, overdriven channel, just by using your your little switch. But you can also do that the same way on the bridge pickup if you just roll the volume. Up. a bit of out of tune but you get the you get the idea if you roll the bridge volume down it's a bit more jangly neck pickup is more for
so that's it this is the way i prefer it uh, i prefer the uh, linear pots as opposed to the audio taper but like i said it's there's no right or wrong it's whatever you prefer by the way if you if you're using strats or telecasters there's also um, 50s wiring available for those type of guitars the same concept and that is the signal hitting the volume first and then the tone knobs i'll put a link to that in the description below as well for those of you strat players all my strats or the one behind me and one on, oops one there as well they have the uh, 50s wiring in them as well and i highly recommend doing it that way so let's hear some samples now i'm going to show you some samples where i play every single one separately and we'll do a little comparison stick around <laughs> So thanks for watching boys and girls that's it for this video i really hope this helps some of you out there like i said if you have a, a guitar which you really like the the look and the feel of but you are just finding that one of the pickups might be sounding a bit too muddy or a bit too bright then hopefully this video will help you find a way to sculpt the tone more towards what you need or what your ears like to hear and please also don't forget to check out don's youtube channel called brazier tone works i'll put a link to it in the description below it's really really an amazing site it's basically the like the library of alexandria in terms of schematics i would highly recommend you check it out and also for those of you who are scared about who've never done soldering in your lives before don't be don't be scared about it. it's not as difficult as it looks you just first of all obviously you need to buy yourself a soldering iron and some solder and there are many great videos on youtube out there on how to solder uh, electronic components within a guitar uh, correctly 
like I said, these are just starting points from which you can build onto. Let's say you go vintage, you can still add a treble bleed on top of the uh, volume pots if it's still not bright enough, or you can up the values of the potentiometers. By the way, I checked, seven, I found a 750k pot as well, so those exist too. I'm sure a lot of other ones exist as well. If you want it to be really bright, then put a 1 meg pot in there. Like I said, it's all up to you. There's no right or wrong way to do these things. Uh, another thing you can do is you can have a hybrid guitar. So if you have a three-way selector switch, and let's say you like the bridge pickup in the modern method. So when you turn the volume down and it, it kind of shaves off some of the highs, so it becomes almost like a Robin Ford-like tone in a way. Um, maybe it's not the best comparison, but yeah, you know what I mean. Then, then wire the path going from the bridge switch of your selector switch through the bridge pickup and the controls using the modern method. And then you can wire the neck pickup path up using the uh, vintage method. But anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, please don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe if, and the notification bell. It really helps. And I'll see you boys and girls in the next one. Cheers and happy new year to everyone. All the best.